All right, folks, as I sit here and edit the final video from the Vegas uh, tournament, the U.S. and Canadian Professional Firefighters Tournament, out at Paiute, I'm going to be showing you the round three leaderboard. This is the back nine version, uh, the last nine holes, I should say. Uh, you'll be seeing the leaderboard and uh, where we stood at the start of round three. And I think we were three under on that first nine holes. And we'll see how we finish on this uh, on this other nine holes. See if we can catch. Uh, we were four strokes behind, as you can see. So hopefully we can catch uh, the DC boys in front of us. But anyway, thanks to Tim for letting me be on his team because I was going to play the individual, but uh, it was nice to be able to play with him and meet a lot of those Syracuse firefighters and the Prince George guys that we played with. So yeah, because in this tournament you play with two other guys from another department because, you know, one, you get brotherhood, camaraderie, and two, you, you help stop the cheating uh, that could happen with four with a four-person scramble. So today, uh, in this video that you're going to see, is it is uh, individual play, then it's the best ball with those four players. So let's see how we do, and uh, I hope you have enjoyed these Paiute videos. So... I've enjoyed edit them, editing them and, you know, I have to do a voiceover because we played music and enjoyed ourselves while we're out there. So, anyway, hope you enjoy the final nine holes of the U.S. and Canadian Firefighters Golf Tournament. All right, hole 17 starts us off on this final nine holes. Par 5, 509 yards, as you can see there. We play the yellow tees. I like the bunkering there. You can hear the wind there. I kept that in just for a little bit. The driver did it. You're on, you're in play. <laughs> Tim did a little grunt there. Stretch it out, stretch it out. I don't know what Eddie's looking for there, fish or something maybe. All right. Not a bad drive there. Okay, good. Different angle for Tim's shot there. Just like to showcase the course with different angles. Almost like you're right, there. A little bit uphill, but... It was either 231 or 241 or 221, you're gonna hear me say. Anyway, it was a long way in, kind of uphill, and the wind was hurting. Hit it solid. I had left spin on it, so it didn't come back to the right enough. All right. It's up there. But it's in a good spot. So our guys in front of us birdied. So I'm trying for the chip, uh, chip in eagle here, pitch. And uh, look at the views though, look at those mountains back there. Gorgeous, gorgeous spot for golf courses. So there's the eagle chip. Didn't throw it high enough. Probably didn't have the distance either, but anyway, there is that hole. And as a as a total team, the front birdied. There we go. So I had to try to chip that in. Positive, positive, positive for me. Moving forward, I hope. So here we go. But anyway, yeah, we're sitting at like four under as a team, I believe. It's hard to keep track of it all when we're hearing from our guys. There are two groups in front of us. But anyway, hole 18, man, beautiful clubhouse in the background there, and. There, wraps around the water a little bit there. All right, beautiful finish on hole at this course. When you play the, when you start from hole one, unlike us, hole eight, beautiful clubhouse. Feet die, normal 18th hole. All right, back to the action. Yeah, with this swing, I wasn't having anything to do with that water left. <laughs> So this ends up in an awkward spot. I know I wasn't going left. And uh, there I am saying, I know I wasn't going left, but anyway, I just wanted to show a different angle of Eddie and Tim's tee balls to come here. And again, showcasing the course. But here's where I ended up. All right, I got me a shot here, folks. <laughs> Look at this. Pete and I, you, Richard. Anyway, update to the guys in front of us, parred the hole. 
and they sent a text to Tim that said, hit it in the waste bunker left near the water, hit it in the bunker right of the green, hit it over the green, then chipped in for the par. So I don't care how you get it done. I have to go for the birdie now, so let's see what I can do. All right, Tim using his driver off the rub, because we can play the ball up in these tournaments for pace of play, reason mainly, and uh, just, just their rules. All right, folks, let's make something miraculous happen here. All right, I'm going to try to make something miraculous happen. So I'm aimed pretty far right here, but you know, I thought it was a four iron. I thought this stance would make it go a little more left for me. Plus, I was worried about that water. So, ah, it's out there. and knowing our guys had already parred, I was Towards the bunker. wasn't playing conservative. I thought that slope would help me a little bit, but then a wind grabbed it. All right, there's another view. Getting those boys driving up. Gorgeous. All right, I'm in the bunker. Here's what I got. Got to hold it out. We're in for par as a team. Yep. Gonna have to try to hold this out. And no. Release. <laughs> that sand went right back in my face. All right, just short of the green. So I'm just gonna pick it up. We're in for par. You heard me there. All right, here's Jeff's putt for birdie, I believe. Come on, ball. And you would think with the wind like it is, and it's downhillish. That anyway. Here's Tim's putt for for the birdie or par. I can't remember. Either way, we're in for par as a team. And here we are, hole one. So if you're playing this course, the regular, you know, starting on hole one, it's a pretty friendly opening hole in my opinion. As far as uh, you know, a, a, like a a welcome handshake. All right, I'm saying it's 347. It's downhill. Not really downwind. It's, it's helping, but it's helping it's to, the left. to the left. The wind there is. You can see the flag down there, barely moving. Or uh, barely. It's not barely moving, but you can barely see the flag. All right, here's Jeff's drive. Beautiful drive. Beautiful drive. I don't want to hit that one again. <laughs> Hell no. Can we shamble from there? This is. Can we, enter, can we invoke that rule right now? <laughs> Everyone gets to play from Jeff's ball. <laughs> yeah, I'd rather play from Jeff's ball there. Here's Eddie's tee shot. I believe, hey, I believe it ended up all right for him. Did he make it over the hill? I couldn't tell. I think it's short of it. I don't know if it bounced out of the desert. That's what I think the hard bounce was. Uh, all right. So Tim lost his right. Keep, Keep trying to draw. Keep drawing. But and you'll see where his T shot or yeah, his T shot ended up. I'm not just fine, but I'm just fine. <laughs> but there's where Tim ended up and he he liked standing on the carpet. He didn't want to be up on that slope. So good looking shot here. Tim hit a good shot here into the front front part of this green. To swing out of that. All right, I think I had like 100, 110 yards or so. Just let the wind bring it left for me. Tim couldn't see it, so he was wondering where it was at. So <laughs> fix your divots, folks, fix your divots. All right, Tim's putt here. This is for his par. That kind of gave me an idea what it might do, but man, it's the wind is playing havoc on the putts. There's another birdie putt for Jeff that either lips out or just looks in the hole. Uh, he couldn't, the whole week, he really couldn't get a putt to fall. He was there all three rounds. So this is a long clip. And the reason I keep it in here is just to, you can see my shorts and my shirt just pushed into me. Look at that. It's just, I, I knew that this putt was one for me to get my mindset going, but important for the, for the team. 
So I just took my time and regrouped. I could have edited, that, edited this all out, but uh, I thought I'd put that in there for... There we go. Look at the wind take it at the end when it lost its pace. Hey, I've contributed two of the last three holes. What do you know? That's golf. Beautiful game. Beautiful resort, golf courses. Thanks to Tim for setting all this up. Syracuse hosting it, so. All right, on to uh, hole number two. All right, hole two. As you can see there, it's got two fairways. That bunker splits it. And uh, yeah, it's just one of those holes that if you haven't played here before, you just really don't feel comfortable over the tee ball. That's what I love about golf is they use those visual visuals, deception bunkers, mounding, whatever, to mess with you visually. And uh, wonderful game. Here's Tim's tee ball. He hit a good one here out in the right fairway. And then here's mine. Popped up and out of that one, hit that one skinny and low. Got away with it. All right, there she is. She's gonna do a 175 to the middle. So 175 to the middle. And I didn't zoom back out to get the shot tracer in on this one. And I hit it fat. That ball above my feet. It's gonna be short. It's short as you'll see here shortly. All right, here's what I got. Look. Couldn't hit that thing above my feet like that. All right, finally coming up with a good pitch and run shot there. So that was into pretty much give me length. No birdie, but we secured the par. And now Tim can fight for his birdie here. And here's Tim's birdie coming down the hill. Nope. Anyway, we secured the par there. There, there's Jeff is again. That was a good putt. That that was it. That was a hard putt. A little bit of break there to it, but still a great putt. Here we go. Hole three, par five. Downhill. Downwind. It's a reachable. Even though it's 539 from the yellow, it's it's reachable. All right, we got a beautiful par five here, 539 yards. Here we are with the zoom, trying to get all the way into the. Played here forever, so I think you can see the green there, a little left. There we go. All right there. So it's got to clear that bunker, and you're in a good spot to attack this this green. So there's a good drive by Tim. Freeze me up, because I know he's gonna be able to lay up to a yard as he wants. But I have this tripod and camera sitting on the, the higher tee behind us and gives us a good perspective of the mountains and everything in the background. But mine made it over the bunker and it's, it's in the fairway. Here comes Eddie's shot. He hit a good one. And here comes uh, Big T Jeff. Yep, bam. He waved at my ball <laughs> when it flew by. Jeff, you built a Scooters coffee shop between me and your ball. <laughs> good drive, brother. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but doing this panoramic scan to show you the course, just I'm talking there a little bit, saying that you know, when you're playing golf, just take in those views and, and enjoy while you're out there in nature. But the music's playing, cart's right there to our left, so 220 yards clear of the water, 242 to the pin, as you can read there. So I had the four iron, and you're gonna see me go back to the cart and grab the five. Now. Grabbing the five might have made me swing too hard right there like that. And I pulled it left, it's over the water, and it skims through that bunker, and you'll see where. I tried to swing a little too hard there, but it got over the water, so. 
see if I can get it close for birdie. All right, I asked him there. His yardage, he's, he's 108, he said. Do a little zoom in here without the shot tracer. See how I do. What do you think? Anyway, you can see the ball on the left there. All right, it popped out of the bunker. Here's what I got for my eagle chip. Down. Son of a fuck! Alright, they sent the military out to come get me because of that shitty putting and shitty shitty chip there. But here's the chip for uh, possible birdie. Yep, I had to try to go for it. I tried. What else can you do? Fuck! A little F word there for good measure. Alright, hole four here. This hole was brutal. It's into the wind. 154, but it was probably playing 184, if not more. Alright, 155. Beautiful golf hole as you can see over the water. Railroad tie bunkers there. Nice looking. Into the wind. Woo! Alright, folks. These fellows are in front of us. Shane, what department? Newport, Rhode Island, baby. First hole in one. First hole in one. All right, where were you guys from? Tell me. Newport, Rhode Island. Newport, Newport, Newport Rhode Island. Island. You guys? Yeah. Local Buck Canadian. Canadian. You guys experienced it together. <laughs> Love hole it. Hole in one right here. Hole in <laughs> one. This guy got a hole in one. <laughs> All right, Shane. Yeah. Shane, what club did you hit? A seven. Seven All from right. 165 into the wind. There it Beautiful. is. Beautiful. All right, guys. Love Fuck it. Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> Hell yeah. So here's my crappy shot into the water. But what was cool about that, we went, Tim and I went ahead and went, ran ahead real quick. <laughs> there, there's, for good measure, the club coming back and hit me when I tossed it down. But Tim pulled his left. But those guys celebrate in front of us. Tim being the host, we went up there to write it down what they did and where they're from. And All right, so our teammates in front of us, they bogeyed. We bogeyed that par. So we bogeyed that par three. What's disappointing is that par five, we were both right there to birdie it, especially me with the chip, and we don't. So that's like giving away two strokes in this tournament, in my opinion. So we just gotta battle the rest of the way. That was a tough par three, and those guys getting that hole in one in front of us, that was amazing, because that pin placement was tough. Sorry I didn't showcase that par three enough with me hitting in the water, but anyway, beautiful place. Let me look at this panorama. So the talk with Tim and I in the card is that we're letting this tournament slide away, out of our grasp. Uh, we felt like, you know, with the wind conditions that we, and the way we, especially Tim on that first nine holes, go back and watch that video, by the way, he was three under through eight holes on his own ball, um, that we were, again, letting it slip away from us a little bit. All right, good drive here. Eddie with a good drive. But it's a beast of a hole into the wind. So 213 yard four iron. And I'll be honest, I, I do remember this shot. I was never comfortable with it. And didn't finish the swing and there she went, Colonel Wayright. A little army golf there. So I end up in the desert. Falling apart, folks. Wind brutal. Can't keep it together. I think Tim's. Well, I think he found it, so he needs to, because might not be, it might not be findable up here. Oh. All right, I got about 60 some yards, I think. Maybe. You got about 60 yards. Yeah, there, I just said it. 60 yards there. You know, luckily this time of year in October when we were there, I, I mean the rattlesnakes might be out. <laughs> But I'll be honest with you, I was looking for them. Caught a rock. I was looking for any critters out there. Oh, caught a rock. I was trying to punch it. I almost hit it really low. Here's Tim's shot. Man, this Tim's is his third shot there. Go. He found his over in the desert left. Oh, right by the hole. Good run, brother. All right, guys, at least I'm showcasing the golf course. <laughs> the best I can. Heck, if I was filming all my shots, you'd see the whole golf course. So, Tim, uh, 
pitched that one close, man. He's, his short game's good. And I can only imagine how good he was when he's, say, my age at 52. So uh, I'm a, it's a joy to be playing with him, Jeff, all three days, and then now Eddie, but Matt the two days before that. So I've enjoyed the time with these brothers. And, uh, hey, I used to get really pissed with the way I'm playing. Yeah, you've shown, you've seen some of the little bit of frustration with me, but man, it would be, it would be really bad back in the days when I didn't understand what the allostatic load of stress was doing to me, especially in a game that I love, let alone what I was doing to my family with yelling at them and taking things out on them for no effing reason. So that's what this channel is about, is try to let people know that there's probably something taking you over, stress from your job and life, and it's changing you. And because it was changing me and I didn't freaking like it. So anyway. All right, two more holes left in uh, this segment of the video of the tournament, but two holes left in the whole tournament. Par five. You would think 508 yards, this is gettable hole. The wind's blowing hard to the right. And my dumb ass didn't compensate. And this ends up in the desert and we can't find it. So I'm in my pocket again. Here's Tim's third shot. All right, good shot, good birdie opportunity. Yep, giving us a good birdie opportunity there. Just past the hole. As you can see there, driving up. This is Jeff's Eagle chip. Yeah, so if Jeff was right there, I, if I kept it in play, I would have a chance to be up there somewhere near the green. But yeah, he pitches it by the hole too far. This is his birdie putt. And again, watch. Yeah. Yeah, here we go. Birdie opportunity for Tim. It sure looks like it wants to come more at the end, or the whole way, really. It sure looked like it broke more than that from my side. Gosh darn it. All right, partner, kept us with a par on this hole because I've been playing like crap these last three or four holes. I think I've been in my pocket three times. All right, last hole of the tournament. So I wish I would have remembered this hole or knew kind of where the sight lines were. There wasn't much room to miss right of that green, so Tim was safe, but I, I think I played it too safe. I, as you'll see where this ball ends up, it's a good drive. And you'll see where it ends up that I probably could have tried to go for the green with those wind conditions. All right, so we got a good drive here. Here's my look. See what we can do. Yes, this pin was sitting back up on a little tier back there, and then I just jab, jab, pitch, chip at it. If I aim for the right, it was the right distance, but that pull. Here's Tim's attempt for, I can't remember what it was for, but either way. My attempt for birdie coming up. And I was putting into that wind and I didn't hit it, but there's the par in the final hole. All right, I wanted to show this graphic again. We started four strokes back from DC Fire, leading the way there at 18 under and we were 14 under. So, the reason I'm showing that is because here's the graphic I'm gonna show you. And ta-da, so we got the win. And here comes the next graphic. We shot six under, they only shot one under, which allowed us to get the victory. It's pretty special because Tim told me he had finished second 10 times in this tournament. This is like the 30th year he's been coming and doing this, whether it's on the East Coast or whether they take it to Vegas, wherever it might be. 
but that's pretty special. It was my first time in this tournament and to experience that with Tim, allow, him allowing me to record the, for the mission and to help push people to maybe follow their tournament and, and play in it because it's about brotherhood and golf and, and having a good time. So anyway, thanks to them. Anyway, love you all. Stay self-aware.